This 3D model of the Titanic has been built using the original plans for the ship and allows us to explore the Titanic with great accuracy. Laid down in March 1909, she was launched a little over two years later and completed just under a year after that, on the 2nd of April 1912. Her size was immense, 882 feet and 9 inches long. She was the largest man-made movable object on Earth. Her construction revolutionised shipbuilding. No one had ever tried to build a ship the size of the Titanic or her sister ships, Olympic and Britannic, ever before. It took an entire year to put her frames in place. She was built with 2,000 hull plates, mostly 6 foot wide and 30 foot long, weighing up to 3 tonnes. The hull was held together with over 3 million iron and steel rivets. Her funnels completed her height to 175 feet from the keel to the top of the funnels. Under the water, her hull was painted with dark red lead oxide paint. For the rest of the hull and the main superstructure, she was painted with white lead, white zinc and carbon black. And she was ready for launch. 100,000 people turned out to watch. The lookout post was 15 metres above the deck. Lookouts worked in shifts of two hours and there was a large bell to ring if any danger was sighted and a telephone to allow them to communicate with the bridge. They were not, however, issued with binoculars. The ship was commanded from the bridge which gave easy access to the outside and a commanding view forward. In 1912, there was no electronic navigation, positioning, communication or collision avoidance systems. Judgment of course and speed was all done by eye. The radio room with the latest Marconi radio equipment was located on the boat deck, as close to the top of the ship as possible, to keep the feed line to the antennae short. The transmitter was the most powerful at sea, able to contact either New York or London from the centre of the Atlantic. The first class accommodation was high up in the ship, away from the noise of the machinery. The suites were lavishly decorated in styles of different historical periods. The largest had their own private section of deck. The third class accommodation was split between either end of the ship in the lower decks. Single men were in the bow and single women and families in the stern, where passengers were subjected to the noise and vibrations of the engine and propellers. The 20 lifeboats were carried on the uppermost deck, but 32 more featured in the original design were never put in place to create space for the wealthy to exercise. This meant that the Titanic only had sufficient lifeboats for 33% of her passengers. The Titanic's band would often perform on the forward half of the boat deck. At 11.40 on the 15th of April 1912, the Titanic was 370 miles south of Newfoundland in 12,500 feet of water. That's nearly two and a half miles. Travelling just under her top speed at roughly 10 metres per second, when an iceberg was spotted by the lookout. He telephoned the bridge with words, iceberg, right ahead. It was a hundred foot tall, the size of an eight-storey building, and with no light to reflect it, the iceberg appeared almost black. The order was given hard a starboard to turn the ship to port, but she struck on the starboard side, tearing as many as six different holes in her hull, all along the lines of her hull plates, suggesting that the rivets snapped off. Water poured in at seven tonnes per second, 15 times faster than it could be pumped out. The hull was divided into 16 watertight compartments, but they did not extend all the way up to the top of the ship, and so the water flooded into each one at a time as the bow began to sink. Within 45 minutes, 1,500 tonnes of water were in the front section of the ship, and she snapped in half. Each section hit the seabed with such force that it created an enormous debris field, the stern burying itself 15 metres into the 
the seabed. 1,534 people lost their lives.